On this day, when Americans traditionally gather with friends and family to celebrate the bounty of food, there are still many in this country struggling to feed themselves. According to the USDA, almost 15% of families with kids in the U.S. suffer from what's known as food insecurity. As the pandemic continues and prices rise, Amna Nawaz has a closer look at the toll all of this is taking on Americans. On a recent morning in Virginia, dozens of people bundled up against the November chill to wait for a Thanksgiving turkey. The line at the Arlington Food Assistance Center was orderly and socially distanced. And in the middle was Cynthia Anthony, a 73-year-old grappling with how to make ends meet. She moved through the line, Thank you. Thank you, dear. checked in, happy, happy. You too. greeted volunteers she's come to know over the past year she's been a regular visitor, and collected her food items. My food stamps is not enough to hold me throughout the month. $20 in food stamps don't get you nothing, and that's what I get. What did $20 in food stamps get you these days? I have a gallon of milk, a pack of hot dogs for $1.99, one loaf of bread. I might be able to get a dozen of eggs. If I don't, I get a half a dozen. That's where the $20 stop at. That's for a few days. I got 28 or 29 more days to go. Anthony is not alone. 55-year-old Anna Deming started coming here after she injured her wrist and couldn't work her hotel job anymore. Here, she's able to pick up the essentials. They give me tomato or some onion, potato. They say, I don't have to buy. And then there's 23-year-old Jax Garnett, a military spouse and mom of five who's currently looking for work. We live on top of a Whole Foods that we can't afford to shop at. So we feel the weight of food inflation and the insecurity on us every day. A recent survey found that the pandemic made it harder for nearly one out of every three Americans to access food. And of those who responded that they had fewer financial resources, nearly half said they were eating less. You know, the minimum wage is still $7.25. Um, so that, um, that really is impossible to live on. Charles Meng is the head of the Arlington Food Assistance Center. He says since the pandemic started, there's one group they've been seeing more of. The typical profile is, is really the working poor. That's the group that changes the most. We have seen an increase uh, very significantly in that particular group. One reason, rising costs at grocery stores across the country. A dollar just doesn't go as far. A pound of ground beef is up nearly 18% over last year. Bacon is up 28 percent, eggs 29 percent. For low-income households, about a third of their total income is spent on food, so this makes it really difficult to have any, um, any margin right now for them to, to be able to feed their families. Katie Fitzgerald is the president of the nonprofit Feeding America that coordinates a network of 200 food banks nationwide. We're seeing, you know, skyrocketing transportation costs, uh, labor challenges at food banks, still challenged to get enough volunteers in, and then just the price of food itself um, is really pricing out some products that food banks otherwise would normally be procuring for their communities. At the Arlington Food Assistance Center, Director Charles Meng said they bought 2,400 turkeys to hand out ahead of Thanksgiving, but that came at a cost. Here we paid a dollar five per pound for turkeys. We're now paying a dollar, almost a uh, dollar 42 per pound. So there's been a tremendous increase in that cost. And if you're one of our clients, you see that cost in your daily um, uh, grocery store bill. Part of what's at play in higher grocery bills begins in backed up container ships in ports around the world. A lack of truck drivers to transport goods, higher gas prices. It all adds up to sticker shock on grocery store shelves and food banks aren't immune. The safety net is subject to those same pressures, right? So um, on one hand, if you think about the supply chain backups, we have orders that food banks have uh, for canned fruit and vegetables in particular, that that's right now a major problem, that are just not being fulfilled and are delayed weeks, sometimes months. The challenges for the supply chain are not sustainable for us because they're impacting 
food donations as more food that would otherwise come to us is going to the secondary market. Another issue facing hungry America, more than 54 million Americans live in areas with poor access to healthy food. That's why food insecurity in the United States looks like obesity. We have an abundance, but it's the wrong food. In Arlington, they've made it part of their mission to help people get more nutritious foods that often come at a higher cost into their diets. With five children, Jax Garnett says it's a big reason she started coming. Sometimes you're like, okay, I don't want to make macaroni again, even though they like that. It's not nutritious. I need substance. There's a lot of other great resources that are food drives or easy pickup options, but a lot of them don't have fruits and vegetables. So to get something fresh, to get milk, eggs, fruits and vegetables, this is one of the few opportunities in Arlington that offers that. And with a turkey in her backpack, Garnett headed off, better prepared to feed her family this Thanksgiving. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Amna Nawaz in Arlington, Virginia.